Alrighty, so um, I'm uh, the Swanee Riverkeeper, John S. Quarterman. That's a staff position and uh, a project at Walls Watershed Coalition, Inc. Walls has been around since 2012, trying to keep the waters clean. I've been the Swanee Riverkeeper since 2016. Yeah, I'm the staff. Um, and uh, fishable, drinkable, swimmable water, that's what we're about. Now, at our first ever Walls Gala in this September, we uh, had three speakers. The first of those was Fannie Marie Jackson Gibbs. Now, we didn't give her a lot of time to speak, so we're thinking now that we're starting this webinar series, how about a whole hour? Um, now, I got to tell you, it's very difficult to get Fannie to speak about anything. <laughs> but she did, fortunately for us, agree to speak. So that's uh, what we're going to do today. And she's going to tell us about a bunch of things. Here, let me uh, put up what she said she's going to talk about. Hope y'all can see that it's picture, Fanny. And she says she's going to talk about Brooks County, Georgia settlers, Little River, Okapilka Creek, Juneteenth, and Quitman sewer problems. So that's what we're doing. We appreciate you all joining for the first ever Walls webinar. And over to Fanny, your own Fanny. Fanny. I really want to thank, thank you and Walls for allowing me to have this opportunity to talk about uh, issues that are, are near and dear to me. And it, what Walls does truly encapsulates my existence, preserving the environment. I'm a tree hugger from birth. I make no, no, no bones about that. And I'm truly, truly fortunate to have met you, Mr. Quarterman, and Gretchen, and your whole organization. And by being affiliated with WALS, I'm able to connect with nature. But the significance to what we're doing now applies to the water. With all the different issues that we're experiencing with uh, drinkable, livable environment, sustainable, I came up with a theme for our Juneteenth for this year, it's South Georgia Juneteenth, healing waters for regenerative living. Water, it's still the breath of life. The reason I wanted to do that is because I'm in the phase of my life of regeneration, healing, making peace with the world and trying to leave the world a better place than I found it. So I had to reach back to my ancestry and my roots. And my roots, Mr. Quarterman, you can show the next, the next slide. My roots reach back to the early settlers who came into the Lowndes, Brooks, metro area with uh, the Guantos, Sion Hall, Pliny Sheffield, McIntosh. There are so many of them. But my history has already documented the European settlers. But growing up and listening to all the stories from my ancestors, and then I'm an avid reader, reading everything, I was always asking my grandma, grandmother and aunties and those, well, what was granddaddy doing? What was who? who? And I was just forever. I couldn't piece all together uh, your history and then our history. But fortunately, nature made a way for us to reconnect our history to the pines and pioneers. Now, we know that this region began in Morven. And Mr. Quarterman, you'll have to help me with the different rivers, the Ocopilco Creek, the Suwannee River, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. They, they all just are forming, they just all come together in my mind and the, the coming over from Africa on the boats, and I promise not to get emotional. My sister says I get too emotional. Anyway, 
We have one cousin, her name is Cheryl Taylor Oliver. She was working in the towers when the when the planes hit those buildings. You really need to connect with Cheryl Taylor Oliver. Cheryl Taylor Oliver has the actual documentation of Primus Rim, and I think there are at least 26 other uh, African-American slaves who came over. She has the name of the boats and everything. That is her, those are her documents. I prefer that she tell her own story. But as a part of that, they came into Morven and the rivers that they had to uh, navigate to build this country. But what's more, more precious to me is what the water does and how it can transform, nurture, and provide sustenance when we have no food. And feel free to ask questions. So to help me get through this, because this is my first time doing this in this forum. And I share with Mr. Quarterman, I don't do this too often. Although I'm an avid Facebooker and a historian, I don't do too many uh, seminars, webinars, because it's a bit heavy to me right now. I've been dealing with this for over 70 years. I'm 71 now. And Mr. Quarterman has shown our family lineage. I can trace back like Jency, the Macintosh slaves with the uh, equipment free press heirs. And eventually the great communication founders came out of Brooks County. And from West Africa, we have Andrew Jackson, the first and one brother who were brought here with Pliny Sheffield in the 1840s. However, before that even happened, my great grandmother, uh, Rachel, Rachel Sharp, was an indentured person with Hamilton W. Sharp, who had the first post office in this area called Sharp Store in Morgan. And those are my ancestors, my mother's people. And together with that, my grandmother's people were the uh, B. James and Ben Davis and those, and they're, they're from Native Americans who inhabited this region before the European settlers came in. That's my grandmother, uh, Polly Mae James Jackson, a noted mid midwife, I believe history is recorded. She delivered at least 3,000 uh, uh, children. And I believe I was one of the last children that grandmother delivered at 5234 Jackson Road in Morgan, and that's her husband, Andrew Jackson II. If you would, and we're look, this is Andrew Jackson the first, and two of his daughters, Olivia is on our uh, left, and Sherry is on is on our right. They are all buried at the old Macedonia Cemetery. This is the cemetery. We are trying to preserve and restore. Andrew Jackson's history is just unique for this region. And at the, the seminar that we held at the Walls, I mentioned that our history is that Andrew Jackson was the person who maintained the Sheffield plantations during the Civil War. And we were told he was the only person of any color allowed to have a gun Fortunately, the gentleman who was at our wall seminar in September validated that, that a Sheffield heir would come to the Lowndes County Historical Society and, and share that information, that a person of color was a one who maintained the Sheffield plantations during the Civil War. So this is the man we're talking about, and he is actually buried at the old cemetery that we are trying to preserve. And he and his wife. Now, Ben Davis is documented in American history as a, a dedicated, devout Confederate soldier. This is history that my family, we've suppressed it, didn't want to divulge it. We fought over it uh, mentally, if not physically. We didn't want to acknowledge that there were any Confederates in the family. I found the document where Pliny Sheffield actually gave a tribute to Ben Davis, who was my grandmother's grandfather. And he is the one who taught the women midwifery, those skills 
and he came from, he was of Haitian descent, but Pliny Sheffield's tribute to Ben Davis was at the Battle of the Wilderness, and uh, Pliny Sheffield was wounded, his arm was, was blown off, and, and Ben Davis was the one who uh, orchestrated the healing, told them what to do, how to save his life and everything. And he had given this tribute to his faithful servant, Ben Davis. And he is buried at Macedonia Cemetery on the Jackson Road. And this is uh, his daughter, Aunt Rydney, is what we called her, Aunt Rydney, Rydney Davis. That is her daughter. My grandmother said they were of Seminole uh, heritage ancestry. I never investigated all that. However, it's important for those moving forward with this history in Brooks County. Just recently, a cousin, Ronald Yerby, out of Miami, Florida, came to Brooks and Lowndes during the Thanksgiving holiday. And he actually toured the Macedonia Cemetery, other cemeteries, places in this region where he knew his ancestors were. And he has found the documents, U.S. federal documents, denoting whether Simon Yerby are members of the Choctaw tribe. So if there's any information out there as far as uh, Native American ancestry and, and, and we Black people, you can readily find it. Now, this is when we try to enter the old Macedonian slave cemetery in 2019 under the direction of Dr. Don Tiemme of Valdosta State University. At that time, it was overgrown weed and we kept it like that for at least 150 years because we didn't want the tombstones disturbed. There was a burial crib there when we were growing up in the shape of a wagon wheel with conch shells all around it. When we went there in the 1960s and prayerfully, my brother Osby still has a video of that encounter where we can show that this did exist at one time. However, a lot of the, the tombstones have fallen in. Now, this is Sidney Jackson's headstone at the old a cemetery, the one we're trying to preserve. And she is documented in uh, American history as a mixed Negro. And we won't get into the politics of what mixed mean, does, if it means you're mixed with white ancestry, African-American ancestry, we won't even discuss that today, but we're all mixed as far as I'm concerned because we all have the same blood. However, we want to concentrate on our waters and what we're worried about now is how we're using the water that we've been gifted and entrusted to keep. I began this quest trying to remember the steps that I had to go through to get a permit for water when I was living in Morven and we needed another well at my mom's house. And I learned just these last two weeks that it's almost like getting a college degree <laughs> to find out anything about the water. I don't know if this is true in other cities, counties, but in Brooks County, I come up against a brick wall and Mr. Quarterman has agreed to help me with that. However, what we're looking at here is the Macedonia Cemetery. We're looking at the uh, old cemetery, which is what we had wanted to, wanted to preserve. And I ran into a a problem with gaining an easement. And as you can see, you can park right there on Jackson Road and, and walk walk to it. It's right there behind that white white building. But uh, the, the spirits told me to rest and, and let the government handle the rest. And now we know that there are Native Americans buried here with the African Americans. But there there's an irrigation system that's uh, the, the backhoe was used to make way for the irrigation system at our old uh, cemetery. We were a bit horrified when we learned this, but I, I've adjusted to this now because uh, God is in control of this. There's an application that we have to complete to get the septic tank and a well permit. Your, your land has to perk. Not sure if all areas can have well water. 
Now, as we move forward, we're going to learn about all of this because there are questions with the water systems and Quitman specifically at the industrial park. And I'm not going to speak for the Brooks County commissioners nor the city equipment commissioners. They are going to have to speak for themselves. I have enough on my plate. They need to tell the city, they need to tell the citizens what is happening with the water in Quitman. I do know there, there was a rumor which has been confirmed to me that there are problems with the infrastructure that houses Aviagen, Aviagen, the chicken hatchery, and in turn, uh, Brook Forest, Spring Creek Apartments. What is happening there, I, I know, but I'm not going to say, I'm going to let them say. I've asked Commissioner James Henry Maxwell I haven't asked Commissioner Patrick Folsom yet, but I've asked uh, City Manager Nancy Dennard to come out and speak to the public and let us know what is happening because we need to know. But I can let you know that in 2019, when we were celebrating a victory against uh, Voter voting rights suppression with the case known as Equipment 10 plus 2. We were <laughs> inviting Stacey Abrams back as our guest speaker. And I had my little flyer with Voices of the South. I've, I've uh, organized several different organizations throughout my lifetime. And to not to confuse the world with the Macedonia Foundation, which is my family ancestry a link i had to actually form my own group which is me i am voices of the south so when you see voices of the south you know that that is coming from fanny i had a little flyer out and a one doctor dr armory horn came over she saw it and we were talking and i want to go on record here that i've known dr horn all my life and I think she will agree. We've never had had conversations. We've we've passed each each other in, in the winds. Forgive me one minute. I'm an emotional person. I cry. So just forgive me a minute. But anyway, in 2019, and she says, I'm going to give you a call. And I'm thinking, yeah, all right. Who would want to call me? I'm loud. I'm I'm emotional. If there's an issue, I feel like people are being suppressed oppressed. I'm your girl. I'm the go-to girl. Nevertheless, she did call me and she explained to me a situation that she had been enduring since 1980, the 1980s. And I was just horrified to find out what she has had to go through in Whitman, trying to get a permit on her own property to open a medical facility. That was 2019. She can tell you herself, I wanted to go viral and public in 2019. Dr. Horn is a loving, meek, mild person. She's the antithesis of Fannie Marie Jackson Gibbs. No, no, no. They're going to do right. They're going to help me. They're going to do right. And I'm thinking, yeah, right. Uh, Dr. Horn just gave me permission this week, last week, I forget, to open up and tell her story. I just got that permission. I told her, Dr. Horn, we cannot handle this by ourselves. Fortunately, the spirit spoke to me and I called the county officials and the city officials were wanting to know myself what's going on. Now, I did receive, I did talk with a representative from, what is it, SEG? Let me get it correctly, SCG? I don't know the name of these organizations, but they're the people that's over the water and everything and equipment. And I asked him about the water situation. He says, 
There's nothing wrong with our water here, so I left it alone. Nevertheless, from from the video that we received from, from Dr. Horn last week, there's a serious problem in equipment with the water and sewer. I was told by one of these county authorities that we're going to need higher help, which means Brooks County is going to need federal help to straighten out this mess we have in Brooks County. Now about the waters and why I'm so committed to working with walls. I want to learn to swim and one of our cousins that we found in this search for our roots has agreed to provide swimming lessons for us. She also wants to help us go back to what we call regener regenerative living, teaching me, the kids, how to farm, how to th just the old traditions of survival. What do you do when electricity goes out? We need to learn this. I know what to do when lights go out here. My granddaughter is my caregiver now. I, I think she's a little afraid and she's 25 and I'm thinking, girl, I grew up without electricity, but we're a different we're in a different age now. But we really, really want to focus on the healing powers of this water. And I am an activist. I'm I'm a political activist. But you know, I've decided to be me. And I I love people. I love life. I don't care if you are a Republican, a Democrat, a lesbian, a gay person, a blue person. I just enjoy life. I enjoy breathing. And I'm just determined this world will not get the best of me. And I love this region. I love my ancestry. And a part of my ancestry is enduring every hardship that this world hands you and surviving because I just believe in God and I believe God is nature, the waters. Now, forgive me if I get go off on a tangent. Those waters can be calming, peaceful, loving, but they can also portend danger with these hurricanes and our ancestors coming over on the seas. So we have to respect what this water does. And I appreciate walls and what they're trying to do as far as gathering these water samples and letting us know if there's anything in them. Because not everyone loves nature the way we do. And, and the greed and greed and money, it, we just have different mindsets about this whole aspect. So a lot has been done to cover up missteps in, in, in the world. But we're out to correct and, 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 and try to heal and people come back together. And I just mentioned to Mr. Quarterman about why people don't uh, come out to events with walls and coming to the rivers and lakes. And they're like me. I love the water, but I have to trust you to go in that water with you. So I'm in a place in my life where I'm opening up, I'm trusting, because in my childhood, I only went in the waters with my uncle Esau Jackson, my uncle Simi Jackson, my brother Osri took me a time or two. But every uh, summer after we finished working in tobacco on the farms, my dad and uncles and those would load us up in, tr in the trucks and cars. And we would go down to Fernandina Beach first in Florida and uh, also Jacksonville Beach. And we were the first African-Americans to actually be uh, afforded that type of opportunity in life with the waters. So the waters mean a lot to me. I have much respect for the waters. And I'm, I'm thinking this seminar, what you're doing is introducing 
to those that don't know the importance of water and, and being stewards of this water, being stewards of nature, being stewards of what God has given us. So if I get a little passionate, just treat it to my head and not my heart. <clears throat> If Fanny is willing to entertain questions anytime you have any. Now, this was at our June, one of our Juneteenth events here where uh, Mr. Quartermen and those finally convinced me to get in the boat. And that was such a, a feeling of peace for me. I'm thinking, I've, I've made it back home. I'm home now. I, I can be me now, I, I, I'm at rest. So uh, unfortunately in 2022, I had a series of uh, bad misfortunes. I lost my best friend in April, uh, Susie Cooper Kyer. She's been my best friend for over 21 years. And then in uh, May, no, June, I lost Jerry Nathaniel Williams my right hand, my left hand, my right leg, my left leg, and my everything. And then in November, I lost my third oldest brother, AJ, Andrew Jackson the fourth. Now, these people were my backbones. Whenever I needed to just talk or bed, they knew my moods and Jerry was my DJ because music soothed me and I love to write. I love to, I love to write. And he was the one who brought me out of my shell after my mom passed in 2000. And he would play music for me when I would get up to, to write and do different things of this nature. So I'm going through an adjustment phase now without these people but I want to honor their memory and let them know that I'll never forget them. And I appreciate them for giving me the strength to stand up for myself and be my own person. And I owe it to those three. Plus with my, my uh, other siblings, <laughs> I, I won't call their names because one of them is looking at me right now, cringing, thinking I might say something wrong. I'm not going to say anything wrong, but they have been my backbone. And I say that with all humility and humbleness because uh, I've just been blessed. I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I've been in situations. I've been homeless. I've been destitute. But I've never been alone. I've never been alone. And I thank them from the, from the depths of my heart and I was forced to do this. <laughs> Dr. Horn, I, I just told her this morning, baby, I don't do this. <laughs> he brought me out of retirement because she's my sister. She's my sister. If I were in her situation, I would pray someone would help me. And we need help in Brooks County, Georgia. We need someone to help us. We cannot do this by ourselves. But also, we want you to come and enjoy, enjoy the love that we have here. Enjoy life. That's, uh, we've got elections coming up, and, and I'm going to campaign and vote and get people to register to vote. But it's, it's not about all that political haranguing on TV. It's been there since creation. It's going to be there when I'm dead and gone. So I have purpose to live each day with a purpose. Now, what we want you to do for our June team is to come see ourselves. The Wide Rest Counties, I believe there are some 27 or more of them. And fortunately, each, each county now is planning different June teams. And I do have the contact people for all these different counties. And we specifically want to focus on the counties that Walls uh, is a part of because we're planning different activities that revolve around the water and how we can use water activities to heal and unite all of us who want to unite, regardless of your political persuasions. 
And that's what it's all about. We want you to come see ourselves, come for a day, a week, a year, a life. Come see our historic churches and cemeteries and buildings and rivers and trails and family and friends and take your shoes off, set a spell, sip some refreshing spring water from many of our pristine fountains of life, tours, boating, fishing, swimming, and there's my number. Most people know how to reach me. I, I'm in the clouds. You can reach me, reach me anywhere. We really, really thank you for listening to this, our first webinar with Walls. And I really, really want to ask you all to help Walls, become a member of Walls, help them. There are some good people. And, and now that I have this audience, I can be me. Let's, let's talk about the Civil War and, and American history. One thing I'm always telling my grandkids and my family, we didn't get out of slavery by ourselves. We didn't get out of slavery by ourselves. And it might offend some people, but I'm going to say it anyway. And my oldest sister, Bonsell Patricia Jackson Vance, and my uh, brother, August Lee Jackson Sr., and my oldest brother, Charlie Milton Jackson Jr., can attest to this, my father, Charlie Milton Jackson, Bud, the greatest Brooks, Brooks County Trojan, always told us, have yourself a good white friend. If I offend you, you're offended. We didn't get out of slavery by ourselves, not all white people want to see us destroyed. Not all white people hate us. Let's concentrate and help those who are willing to help us. And one thing that moved me with Walls is when I learned the story about what they were trying to do at Reed Bingham, they will tell the story themselves about how they were offering these voting lessons. And they noticed that the, the young black kids were most of the ones coming out to learn this. And that is when they began their focus to teach these black kids how to vote and paddle and all this. And I'm thinking, really? White people still care for black kids? And, and I was really flabbergasted. So I've made it, I've made it my mission. I'm looking for people like that. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm just being Fanny. I'm just being Fanny Marie. And I, I appreciate Dr. Horn letting me go, letting, letting me go, giving me back my freedom. I've told her, Doc, I've done all I can do with this. I've beat every horse. I've contacted every politician I know. I've sent letters here, I've sent letters there. And I can promise my government, my Brooks County government, my city equipment government, you'll never get another letter from Fannie Marie Jackson Gibbs. Matter of fact, you'll never get another phone call because I was talking with uh, the, the county administrator, Brooks County administrator, when the uh, hurricane came through about the non-response as far as all of us poor people who had nowhere to go, no money, no, no nothing. And I guess I got a little emotional and she thought I was yelling at her and she said, now you're yelling at me and I'm going to hang this phone up. And I thought, oh, wow, but I'm just being me. And, and that caused me to think, now, what if that got out? I was yelling at the county administrator. So I have to be more cautious about me, who I interact with and who I talk with. But I can honestly promise my government no more letters, no more calls from me. This is higher than me. But uh, I, I was given the permission to say Brooks County needs help with what's going on in equipment and that infrastructure. And I hope someone will hear this message. And I hope that our listeners will, will take a look at us and our history and come be a part of us. Move here. We're, we're, it's, it's a good place to live. You can make a good living here. Any questions? 
Um, did well, I didn't. I didn't fully go into the and in, into how uh, we uncovered. Dr. Horn had been trying to get this permit for years. Finally, she had called me in. This is 2019. I believe it was 2020. I forget the exact day. I think it was July 15th, 2020. She looked out and there is sewage and refuse spewing forth in her yard, in her property. Now that's God. I don't care if you, I, and I have so many friends who are, who are atheists and agnostics and, and whatever, but that's God. Only God could open that earth up like that and show her why she had never received a permit to put a medical office on her own property. Someone knew, someone knew what was underneath there. I didn't do it. Don't be angry with me. I was just brought in to help report it. Well, I don't know exactly what's going on there, which is part of the problem. It's very difficult to find out what's going on. I uh, asked the city of Quitman for a utilities map, and they got ones that go down towards the south end of town, but then they sort of stop before you get down to where the uh, industrial park is. And I got a map of utilities in the industrial park, but they stopped before they connect up with the city of Quitman. So it's it's hard to tell what's going on there. Why it's so difficult is really an interesting question. Why should it be that difficult? I was told that nothing can be built in the industrial part that at one point the, the county fathers looked at building or digging a well, but they that was vetoed. And, and uh, the person whom I was talking with said, we need help in here. And that's, that's all that, that's all that I know. But I do know, I think, uh, I don't know the figures, how much money was set aside for for this uh, intended uh, film park, I, I don't. I don't know the. I know it's millions and millions of dollars that it was supposedly set aside. The state of Georgia was going to pump in so many millions of dollars for the the film park or something. I I don't know the names of these different uh, entities or whatever. But I do know that that is not foreseeable anytime in the near future. First of all, they need to correct the damage that they've already done. They need to correct that damage and, and we need to unite and decide how to live together peacefully as family and friends and in love and harmony. And we're all related. We're all related by blood, human blood. Um, a year or two ago, there was money available from the federal government uh, funneled through the state to um, help with sewer systems. And all sorts of cities and counties got some of that money, Ray City, Georgia, Valdosta, naturally, all sorts of others. Equipment applied, I even sent in a, a, a comment, you know, equipment really needs this money, but uh, equipment oddly did not get it. I have to wonder what went on with that, too. There's a lot of interesting questions about what's yeah. going on with the sewer yeah. structure and equipment. My, under, my understanding today is that there is a city audit that has not been completed, and the city is not eligible to receive any, any more funds. This is my understanding. This is why I am saying somebody, somebody somewhere needs to tell the public something. And there was a hint to this in, in this week's Equipment Free Press. And there are hints on social, hints here, hints there. But I, I'm a direct person. I, I believe in going to the horse's mouth, as they say. I think I think we should know. Don't, am I wrong? I think we should know. Well, I think we should know. I think also equipment keeps having sewage spills, most recently one on 
on July 11th, I believe it was, more than 10,000 gallons, which means that's a major spill. Uh, so there's been a bunch of those. We keep track of all of them, and they're, of course, show up in the um, Georgia EPD sewage spills report. But, you know, why do they keep having so many spills? This is where the ARPA money, the federal money, would have been very helpful. Um, they've changed their utility consultant who actually runs this stuff recently. So maybe the new guys can do better. I don't know. Just so many of these. It's. Uh... Well, I want to try to suppress the aroma meal. If if uh, Brook Forest, Spring Spring Creek, Aviagan, or Aviagan, how we pronounce that name, if those places are in danger or are in jeopardy, are burning to the ground. Isn't that a health hazard? You sure think so. We need answers. We need answers. And of course, uh, the site of Aviagen there in uh, the Brooks County Industrial Park is on uh, little bitty feeder creeks that run into Piscoa Creek, which runs into Okapilco Creek, which runs into the Withlacoochee River. Every time equipment has a spill, that goes down Okapilco Creek into the Withlacoochee River, unless, of course, it's in the industrial park of the south side of town, in which case it might end up in Piscoa Creek, and it'll still end up in the Withlacoochee River. So it's you know, a problem for the people working and living in equipment, and it's a problem for everybody else downstream on the river as well. So I hope that uh, they can get a grip on that problem because it's definitely a problem. And and one thing that I, I'm not understanding is, what is this that is on Dr. Horn's property? I, I don't understand where that's coming from. I, I think she, there was a, she filmed it. She said that it was sewage that she filmed the last week. And uh, I'm confused. What, what, why is that on her land? Where did that come from? That is a very good question. It seems that uh, the city equipment ought to be able to answer that question. But so far, they have not. No, not today. They've not. They've not answered that. But we're we're praying. We're hoping that this is an icebreaker for them, and we're hoping that they understand we we are here to help. We are here to help and to heal. We've all been traumatized enough. I believe Sarah is going to go over and do uh, collect some water quality samples and see if we can see any E. coli in it. That would help indicate if it's really a problem or not. Um. And we'll see yes, what else I do intend to go out there and do some investigating at home. I'd like to do it today after the meeting or after the Zoom webinar. We can hear you, Sarah. Did you hear that? She's going to go out and collect the sample after the webinar today. Thank you. But also, uh, right across from, from where this, whatever this is, across from Dr. Horan's house, Here's our old high school gym, Washington Street High School gym, which we're working on for historical reasons and to house all of our historical documents as far as pertaining African-American and Native American history for this region. And we're thankful that we've kept at this, uh, me 70 years, Dr. Hornet, all her life, uh, my brothers and those, and those some of those joining this this webinar have been doing this for at least a hundred years, but uh, in conjunction with that, we're we're fortunate that Valdosta State University is finally uh, encompassing all of our history in their archives. So, if there is anyone out there that want to contribute to the VSU archives, documenting your family's history from this little old region in South Georgia. It, it doesn't have to be Brooks County. It can be Thomas County, one of the bigger counties, Thomas County or Lowndes County. You don't have to own Brooks County. We'll own Brooks County for you. 
because we know that all roads began in Brooks. <laughs> but we're welcoming everybody to come to our South Georgia. Right. And, but we, we definitely want to get answers to answers to this water and the sewer problems. And we need to take the politics out of this. Right, related to that, let me just back up to something you didn't really talk about, the Mary Turner lynching, which uh, probably many of you know about. What, why I want to mention this is it's on right next to the Little River at Folsom Bridge, which is mentioned here, you know, highlighted. And um, in uh, last year, <clears throat> Fannie and Macedonia Community Foundation and Walls worked together because Lowndes County had a request to close the road leading to the Mary Turner lynching site. And also that same road is the access to the Little River there, the only public access in that area. Next, next public access is 25 river miles downstream. And uh, with us and a bunch of local landowners who did not want it closed, Lowndes County agreed not to close it. So here's a case of, uh, I'm familiar with some of those landowners, and um, they're probably of different political persuasions than Fannie, I'm fairly sure. But everybody was working together on this one to keep that road open. So we've been working with Fannie and local landowners on things like this, having to do with the water and history and keeping it open. And that's what it's all about. I can be independent, Mr. Quarterman. I can be independent. <laughs> well, and I'm sure you will never write a letter again. I am completely <laughs> convinced, Fanny. I'm done. I'm going on vacation. I, I see you all. I'm, I'm done. I, I'm done. What do you think, Sarah? Do you believe her? She's never going to write a letter again. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Sarah, You'll get mad enough. <laughs> yeah, Sarah is one of our original water quality testers, and she's also <laughs> the president of the Walls Board of Directors. So thanks for joining us, Sarah. You got through the technical difficulties. <laughs> Finally, I had to reboot four different times, but I'm here. <laughs> And, and while I have you all in this audience here, I wanted to let update what has happened with the preservation of the old Macedonia Slave Cemetery because I ran into this brick wall where the, the uh, current owner has not wanted to provide the, uh, the easement. And uh, our Georgia Department of Community Affairs gave it back to me to give back to the county. The county is supposed to be responsible, according to them, for the licensing and the permitting of the irrigation systems. That's as far as I've gotten with that, but I think, Mr. Quarterman, you would know more about that than I know about that. And I and I got mad enough, and I'm thinking, you know why I'm 70 in extremely poor health. Why am I having to run around here? and do the county's work for them. And I became angry and I said, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this anymore. Sounds like you made some progress. <laughs> well. The cemetery's in this clump of woods here, mm -hmm. which is right off of Jackson Road. It's a little bit towards Quitman from the new Macedonia Cemetery. It's the old Macedonia Cemetery, mm -hmm. which is at the top of a creek that then runs down, it's, here it is way down at the bottom, it runs down and joins up with Slaughter Creek and goes into the Little River downstream okay. from Folsom Bridge Landing where the Mary Turner site is. It's all tied together by the waters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and also I, I would like to mention that uh, my second oldest brother, Oglesby Lee Jackson uh, Sr., escaped a KKK potential lynching in 1966 when he was chased away from the Brooks County Courthouse. It was over uh, integration and how those people did not want to integrate the schools in Brooks County, Georgia. And my my brother and my first cousin, Willie Joe Jackson, had a, went to the courthouse 
for was what was so-called a citizens meeting about the integration issues, but it was actually a, a, a Klan rally and they had to flee for their lives. And Osby escaped that uh, that incident. He ran out of ran out of the courthouse, and he didn't tell his. This was in 1966. He didn't tell what had happened to him. I believe the year was 1994 when we had a family reunion. He finally told us what had happened to him after he ran away from the the courthouse. And he ran down to what we call the soda shop, which was in Quitman, Georgia. And it was managed by one uh, Mrs. Louise Newsom. And Mrs. Louise Newsom hid him in the trunk of her car. And after she closed up the soda shop, she uh, went there. There was an actual patrol. They were uh, checking all vehicles and everything. They were looking for these colored boys that had interrupted the KKK rally, but they allowed Mrs. Louise Newsom to go through because Mrs. Newsom was well-known, prominent, uh, and they allowed her to, to go through. Mrs. Louise Newsom drove him down to the edge of what we call Toilet Tissue Road, Highway 133 now, right where the Ocopilco Creek begins. And Osby said he had he ran through that Okapilco Creek back up in the woods where we had there my auntie's mother, Mrs. Mabel Gilbert, lived, and she was a Native American where she lived. And uh, Mrs. Mabel Gilbert fixed him a syrup biscuit, and they were she, they were scared. She said, "B." Baby, you you gotta you gotta go hide. They come here, they're gonna kill both of us. So she fixed him the syrup biscuits, and B said he knew not to come to the house where we were because he he figured that they came to the house, they would kill all of us. So what B did, he climbed. He said he saw the the tallest tree that he could, and he climbed that tree, and that is where he 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 clung there. I think for maybe a day and a half. All I remember is being at home at 5234 Jackson Road. And Osby is my doggy dad. I love all my brothers and sisters, but they know Osby and I, we have a love, hate relationship. I can beat him up and he'll still come back and feed me. So, and all our, I think I was uh, 13, 12, 11, 12. And all I remember is all of my aunties and grandmother was still living. And I remember just sitting there wondering why and daddy those had those guns and all these men are here and be missing, always be missing. That's all I remember. That's all I remember for, for years and years and years. But Osby didn't share with us until 1994 what had happened to him during that episode. He actually ran through that creek, Mr. Quarterman, the Okapilco mm -hmm. Creek. That's, that's what, that was a, a means of safety for him. So we're really, we're just a blessed, thankful family. All righty. Well, some other time we'll talk about the cattle manure in Okapilco Creek, but that's not the topic today. <laughs> thank you. So, <laughs> so Sarah, you want to thank uh, Fanny for doing mm -hmm. this? Yeah, we have come up on the one o'clock hour, and I don't want to have anybody lose their jobs over a long lunch break. So, <laughs> does anybody have any questions for Miss Fanny? Feel free to speak up. Well, all right. You've been very informative. Thank you for speaking with us today. And I expect to have you back again. <laughs> Thank you all for having me. Bye. Have a beautiful weekend. Enjoy yourselves. You. Bye. Join us next Thank time, you. February 8th. We'll announce the speaker before then. Bye. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you. Bye.